Hi everyone, Tanya Hertz here. We're going to be talking tonight about taxes and we're going to jump right into the tax slides. We're going to cover what you need to do to pay taxes, what you need to keep track of. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about sales taxes, common deductions for food businesses. And we'll also talk a little bit about profit and pricing. Okay, so taxes. As a business owner, it's important that you understand your federal, your state, and your local tax requirements. This is going to help you when you file your taxes. It'll help you file your taxes accurately and make your payments on time. Remember, if you are operating a business out of your home, you can count all of those uh, expenses that go into the overhead of maintaining your home as uh, business expenses, which reduces the amount of tax that you need to pay for uh, the government. Remember also, if you're in a, a household where one person, let's say, works uh, for a standard type of a job where they're uh, getting, getting taxes taken out each week or each month on their, uh, of their paycheck, and another person has their own business, their own uh, food business restaurant that they're running, catering business out of the home, you can offset the income or the money that you pay in taxes on uh, one of the businesses that come out of each, you know, each month in taxes with your uh, expenses from your home business if you're filing taxes jointly. So that can be huge. That can be huge. That could mean that, uh, if you have enough expenses and you're really careful about recording all of your expenses, it could mean um, getting back tens of thousands of dollars at the end of the year where other people would just pay that to the government. So you really, really, really need to be careful about paying, uh, you know, keeping track of the taxes and paying what you legally should pay and not, um, not just like every other, you know, working schmuck, right? This is why businesses they have an unfair advantage legally in this country. So take advantage of that unfair advantage yourself as a business owner, right? It's there, everybody else does it, you should do it. <laughs> okay, so um, the business structure that you've chosen for your business is going to determine how much you pay in taxes and how you pay taxes. Remember, we talked about the legal structures uh, and some, some are passed through corporations. Like if you're a sole proprietor, you pay money on the, on the uh, income that the business earns, they're, they're joined together, or a corporation, you might have to pay taxes twice. You might have to pay taxes first as the that the business earns, and then again, when you take money out as the business owner. So make sure that you are really careful about the structure. Meet with a mentor if you have not uh, yet, well, it doesn't matter if you have chosen the business structure, you can change it. Just because you're a sole proprietorship today doesn't mean that tomorrow you can't be an LLC or uh, an S Corp or, or something else. So. I highly recommend meet with an advisor to help with this. And remember though, that every time you change the structure of your business, you do have to pay additional taxes um, at the federal and state level. Uh, remember also that sales taxes, if you, if you uh, need to pay, pay sales taxes on the, um, no services in the state of California, you have to pay sales tax on, but if you're uh, selling, uh, something tangible, a uh, good, you do have to pay sales tax on that. And it depends on the, area that you're in, the amount of sales tax that you have to pay. So uh, make sure that you are uh, accounting for that and keeping that, um, keeping good records and paying that regularly. The, the government will, uh, the state of California will uh, request that you pay quarterly sales taxes if you, uh, if it looks like you're going to have sales taxes to pay. And so uh, it's really important that you stay on top of it. Do not let that get behind because they'll come after you, especially if you have like if you're sole proprietorship or some type of a ownership where it's not separate the, yourself from the business. So make sure that you make sure that you know the difference. Um, direct and indirect taxes. Direct taxes um, are taxes that the taxpayer pays directly to the government. Indirect taxes can be passed on or shifted to another person uh, by the group or, or um, the person that owns it. Um, so it's important that you understand the differences and that you um, you pay your taxes, right? Tax uh, uh, avoidance um, is definitely, <laughs> take advantage of all legal ways of reducing your taxable uh, amounts, <laughs> all legal ways. You don't want to avoid uh, paying legal taxes that are due, right? Um, so reduce your taxes, don't avoid paying what you actually owe. 
Okay, so income taxes are direct taxes. Uh, income taxes include wages, salaries from employment, tips, dividends, capital gains, disbursements from IRAs, alimony payments, social security benefits. All of these are direct income taxes that you need to uh, pay tax on. Another kind of uh, direct tax is a property tax. Uh, these are, uh, well, they can be, um, they can be, uh, combined with your mortgage payment if you've uh, set it up that way, or if not, then do twice a year. And um, we also uh, we also pay direct taxes on um, vehicles, uh, especially in the state of California. There's other types of uh, direct taxes. Uh, indirect taxes, however, are taxes like payroll taxes. And this is really important that you understand, um, and or sales taxes, that you understand and that you are um, calculating correctly, especially once you get to the point where you are hiring employees, if you are hiring employees. However, um, take advantage of the fact that uh, still today, still in California today, you can employ 1099. Uh, well, they're not actually employed. You can, you can contract with uh, a 1099 uh, and non-employees, but uh, workers who work for themselves and then pay their own taxes and then you don't have to worry about things like payroll taxes. But if you do hire an employee to work for you, you need to, uh, you need to collect taxes on their behalf. So uh, these are withheld from your paychecks by the employer and you pay these directly to the government. Um, biggest payroll tax is FICA, uh, which goes to your social security, your Medicare. You also have um, other state and federal uh, uh, unemployment tax that you need to pay it's essentially um, unemployment insurance that you're you're paying uh, for when you're in, for if when and when or if your employee is unemployed. Um, now, again, this is really important. You think about how you're bringing people on to help you. If they're an owner of the business or have equity in the business, that um, it might be smarter to not bring them on as an employee, but to um, you know, bring them on as an owner so you don't have to pay them payroll taxes or uh, pay them as um, sub co or contractors rather or uh, independent contractors or, um, you know, independent workers if possible. But there are rules that go along with that. So you need to make sure that you're doing this right. You don't want to, you don't want to get yourself into trouble and, and for example, bring somebody on, let's say as a delivery driver and you say, okay, I'm going to have a delivery driver deliver food for me and I'll just pay this person per delivery and uh, not as an employee, just as a gig, right? Gig worker in the gig economy as an independent contractor. That would be ideal, right? Ideal, just 20 bucks per gig or whatever it is. Um, but you need to be very, very, very careful about doing that. You need to make sure that you're following all of the, all of the required laws. If, if you're telling the person what they need to wear, if you're telling the person um, exactly how to do all of, the, uh, all of the things that need to be done as part of the job, that's an employee. That is not a gig worker. That's not an independent contractor. It's not a freelancer. And if you pay them as such and don't take out payroll taxes, you're violating many, many laws and you can get yourself in trouble. And that's a good way to end your business quickly, right? So um, make sure that you're, you're doing it right. Sales tax are another way that uh, that um, restaurateurs or small business owners get themselves into a lot of trouble uh, because even though you're collecting that sales tax on behalf of the government, it needs to be then paid to the government and needs to be paid regularly. And um, it's this is why it's so important that you keep very good, good books, right? That you spend a lot of time working in the books um, of your business. So uh, sales taxes are collected at the time of the point of sale uh, at the time of purchase, uh, and then they're held by you as the business owner, and then they're um, paid to the government on behalf of the uh, on behalf of the purchaser. And you don't pay additional tax on uh, things like wholesale purchases from a manufacturer because uh, sales taxes aren't collected on those, right? Um, sales taxes uh, can be applied federal, state, and local. And so depending on where your business is, is where you actually file for your business license uh, will make a difference in the amount of money that you need to pay. So be really careful about thinking about where you're actually starting that business um, and whether, whether or not you need to actually pay sales tax. Remember in California, you don't have to pay sales tax on uh, services, just to, uh, on goods. So um, a little bit about standard and itemized deductions. Uh, the IRS allows for standard deductions for certain uh, 
taxpayers or certain industries based on your circumstances. And the standard deduction very often can be more than the itemized deduction. However, this is typically not true when you are a small business owner because the itemized deductions, if you're careful about keeping good records and, and, and counting what you legally can count as, as, a, as a deductible expense, it's typically a lot more when you do itemized deductions. And remember, you can offset the amount of money that you have to pay the government in taxes if you have two sources of, of income, if you have one job that, like, like I said before, that where they're taking out the taxes for you and another of your own business. This is why I always tell all of my students throughout history, always own your own business. Always own your own business so that you can deduct any expenses that are both personal and business expenses. Um, so charitable contributions. So if you're giving a, like a, a restaurateur who's, who's doing a food benefit for, um, for a cause, and uh, you can deduct every single expense that goes along with that. All those charitable uh, contributions are direct uh, deductions, but keep track of everything. Take pictures, keep track of everything. Um, any business expense, education expenses, anything that you uh, need to make that business happen. Um, you can only take the standard deduction or itemize, not both. <laughs> so uh, keep good track of everything so that at the end of the year, you can decide what you want to do. And if you're careful, you should be able to write off a lot more itemized than standard deductions. Um, tax credits are different than deductions. Ta deductions reduce the total amount of taxable income before the taxes are calculated. It doesn't come right off the amount of tax that you owe. It comes off the total amount that you've earned. So when you're taking a deduction of, let's say uh, you, I don't know, spent a hundred dollars on um, some charitable contribution, and um, and you owed, let's say, let's say you owed five hundred dollars in taxes. Okay, uh, that hundred dollars does not come off of the five hundred dollars that you owe in taxes. It comes off of the total amount that you earned before they calculated those taxes. So if you earned ten thousand uh, dollars, then you could you would reduce the amount that you earned by one hundred dollars, not the tax by one hundred dollars. That I hope that makes sense, right? So you're you're uh, you're reducing, you're taking deductions from your taxable income, not your tax amount. Now, a tax credit, on the other hand, comes off of the total tax bill. So if you had $500 due in taxes and you had a tax credit of $100, that comes right off of that, that $500. And so you would only owe $400, right? Um, and uh, credits, obviously, you can see now why credits are preferable to deductions, because uh, even if the dollar amount of the deduction is higher than the tax credit, it's still preferable to take uh, typically a deduction because it comes right off that end amount you own. Uh, so tax return is what you file each year with the IRS that gives your adjusted gross income, your expenses, and your other financial information. If you do a good job keeping track of everything all year long, this should be a, a, not a horribly painful time of year. You know, it doesn't April doesn't have to be the, the worst uh, month of the year when you're a business owner if you're really good at keeping um, good records on all of your um, for all of your taxes. So everything that we're doing, all of these, all of these um, forms that we're teaching you how to make, they're ultimately, you use them for all the things that we talked about, but then really for your taxes at the end of the year. So, uh, you know, having these good financials is going to make life really easy at the end of the year. You can, um, tax returns will also include things like deductions, uh, student loan interest, healthcare coverage, any IRA contributions. If you had any home, uh, any business use of your home, you get to write all that out, um, any business expense, any charitable contribution, and then what's left over, you actually uh, take that back in a tax refund. Now, as a business owner, don't think that a tax refund is just a dream that you'll never see again, um, especially if you are in a, a, a household where you're filing jointly, and one of the people has a job and the other person has a business, or like me, I've always, well, not always, but for the last, I don't know, 20 years or so, I've had a, a, a paid job, and then I also always have a business at the same time. And so I can write off all of my business expenses, my legitimate business expenses, and, and then all the money that, it, that they took out in taxes, uh, I, I get back at the end of the year in, in a refund and I get a lot more back than if I didn't have that, didn't have that um, you know, business. So everybody have a business. Here's some resources for you uh, for, uh, for filing your taxes and, um, 
yeah, get, get, get working on it now. I'm going to go ahead and stop the video here, and we are going to finish our pricing and um, uh, profitability uh, video after this. So bye, everyone. Take care.